All right, so here's the deal. I've lived in Northern Arizona now for three years, specifically Flagstaff, and it didn't take me long after moving here to figure out what all of the peaks in the area are. All the geologic formations, all of the prominent landscapes. Uh, it's kind of my thing. I work in the geosciences, so I was very quick to start identifying things. Now, one of the things that I've always thought was a little bit odd about this area is there's one peak in particular that I like to call the invisible peak. I have no idea why, but for whatever reason, this one peak in the area goes essentially unnoticed. I have stood on the top of Mount Humphreys, the highest point in Arizona, looked out to the west to see all of the prominent peaks and spoken with other hikers and said, oh, that one over there, that's Kendrick, right? Yeah, what's that one? Nobody knows. And it just blows me away because I figured out what that peak was pretty quickly. And what's even cooler about this peak is that there's no trail to the summit. And so if you want to hike it, you got to do some research and you got to do some bushwhacking. So that's where I'm going with this video. Let me pull up a topo map and get into some more detail. All right, so what I've got pulled up here is a topo map of the greater Flagstaff area. Now there are obviously some features that should jump out at you right away. The first being this large group of mountains right in the center north of Flagstaff. These are the San Francisco peaks and they include Humphreys Peak, which is the highest point in all of Arizona. Now just south of the San Francisco peaks, you also have Mount Eldon, which is the mountain right in town that goes up to about 9,000 feet. As you continue to scan your way around, to the west side, you'll notice several distinct peaks. Uh, way over here to the west, you've got Bill Williams Mountain, which I've also been up on the motorcycle. There's a road to the top. Now, Bill Williams Mountain sits just south of the eponymous town of Williams, as you would expect. But as you move back up towards the San Francisco peaks, you'll notice these two groupings of peaks here. Now this one up to the north is Kendrick Peak, very well-known mountain in the area. It's over 10,000 feet. It's got some beautiful trails that, that you can hike to the summit and there's a fire tower at the top. I did that hike last year. It was really quite splendid. But as I move down here to this unnamed peak, this is where we get to the root of this video. So this mountain here, as I zoom in on it, you'll notice it has no name. Um, but it is still quite prominent. It's over 9,300 feet in elevation, uh, and it is very identifiable on the skyline. You can see it sits just north of Highway 40, so as you drive west out of town, it's right there like a sore thumb. It sticks up. It's very prominent, but nobody talks about it. Nobody acknowledges it. I like to consider this the Forgotten Mountain. Well, this peak does have a name. It's called Sitgraves Mountain, and it is truly the forgotten and unspoken mountain. So if you go over to summitpost.org and you look at the entry for Sitgraves, it literally says, this mountain stands alone along I-40, very visible, but very few bother to ask, what is this mountain? So obviously this is where we're going. You guys know my fascination with geographical oddities and getting off the beaten path. I'm gonna go out to this peak and I'm going to try to find a way to get to the top of it, which is going to involve a lot of navigation on a lot of back roads, and it's gonna involve hiking off trail, bushwhacking to the summit since there's no trail. So that is the plan for today. I'm taking the Trail 125. I'm gonna load it up with spare tubes and all my tools and everything and make sure that I'm set in case I have a breakdown bring my pack, bring water, bring everything, my trekking poles, you name it, and we're gonna summit sit graves. So let's get to it. All right, guys, well, as you can see, we're all ready to go. I've got my drone, all my extra tools, some spare tubes, GoPro stuff, everything that I need is in the milk crate. I've got my backpack with all my hiking stuff in it and my water. Bike is set up, ready to go. I'm gonna be using my uh, charger for my phone. I got the map loaded and, uh, Nothing left to do now but get on the road. We are ready to go explore Sitgraves Mountain on this beautiful day, hopefully before any thunderstorms come in, which we are forecast to get later this afternoon. So I've got about 35 miles to get to the spot where I'd like to try and park for this hike. 
Uh, but it's up a pretty steep climb, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get up all the way to that final spot. But worst case scenario, I just have to park about a mile further down the road and just you know add a couple of miles to the hike. We have made it to our turn. We can get off the highway. There was a lot of traffic. It was very uncomfortable. I do not like holding up traffic. Uh, but thankfully, we have made it to our road and we can spend the rest of the day putting down forest roads at a nice, comfortable pace. <laughs> Okay, this is getting pretty sketch, guys. A little bit sketchy. <laughs> oh man, this is getting a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy indeed. <sighs> oh my goodness. <sighs> oh man, this is getting pretty steep too. Come on, little trail, you can do it. Whoo! <sighs> Almost didn't want to accelerate up that. This is definitely a decent gradient. Oh man, this is getting really, really steep, guys. <laughs> I think. <sighs> man, I honestly don't even know which way the trail goes. I think it goes straight, but man. I think it goes this way, but it's hard to say. Man, it's really hard to say. But I think regardless, I'm gonna go down this trail here and then uh, probably park it because we're getting pretty close. All right, we're gonna need a little bit of a, of a head start on this climb. Come on, there she goes. Uh, this is also quite steep. It's definitely struggling to climb this. I've got it fully ringed out and it's just barely getting up this. Oh, we got ourselves a little log here. Uh-oh, I don't think it's gonna go. Come on, just need a little more momentum. There you go. Come on. <laughs> well, and this road has petered out. So I think, I think we've come to the end of the line, my friends. All right, we are here in the middle of the woods, middle of nowhere, and I'm fairly confident I can say that I don't think anyone's gonna mess with the bike way up here on the side of the invisible mountain. So as you can see, it's pretty steep. I'm gonna have to basically trudge up these hill slopes up to the saddle to start the hike. 
um, but I'm very happy that I was able to get 95% of the way to the final saddle on the bike. I think I got off course somewhere in there, but honestly, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just getting stuff set up here and then I'm gonna start trekking up into the hills. Man, it's beautiful up here. It's quiet, I love it. Okay, so we're heading up to the first sub peak, peak 9004, and it's just climbing <laughs> straight up the side. This is pretty steep. Definitely uh, not a light gradient. Looks like the top is just right up there in those trees. Whew, man, this is steep. It's so hard to tell, that is like straight down. Back to the bike. We are almost to the summit. It's just up through these trees up here. And then we'll start working our way over towards the prime summit of Sick Graves. All right, we're here. The last few feet to the summit. Yeah, that was a good climb. Definitely wasn't messing around. All right. This looks like the top. Yeah, this is definitely it. And that, my friends, is Sick Graves. Right there, through the trees. Awesome. Here we are. Summit 9004, a sub summit of sick graves. And uh, yeah, those clouds are not looking good, so I'm gonna keep moving. It's time to head down over to the first of many false summits and uh, ultimately top out on sick graves. So let's do this. I'm making really good time on this descent because. Uh, it's steep <laughs> and I can just crush down and we're almost back down into the saddle, I think. And then we'll start to climb up to the primary peaks. And that might be it. That might be the bottom right there. I do think it might be. So it's time to buckle up, buttercup, because we're about to go climbing. All right, what's our elevation? 85.62, so yeah, about 500 feet we've got. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and try to bang out some, some climb here. Check back in a little ways up the climb. Okay, status update. Almost to the top of the secondary peak, and then it's just a quick down and up over to sick graves, but that is starting to bother me. So I'm going to at least hit this summit and if it still looks like this, I'm gonna push on, but if it starts to get closer, if I see lightning, I'm definitely bailing. So let's get moving. Almost there. <laughs> Just about to top out on the secondary peak. As soon as we crest here, we should be able to see the final summit, which is about 0.2 away. There it is. It's right there. How about that? <sighs> That's super close. All right, we are in the final saddle. Ooh, that was lightning. Oh God, that is making me nervous. 9,122. The summit is at almost 94. So we've got 300 feet to climb. And lightning is coming. Sheesh, man, I'm starting to get really nervous. All right, I'm gonna close, shut this down. And I think I just saw a raindrop too. All right, guys, it's uh, crunch time and I gotta go. That's coming. That's the summit. I'm just gonna bag it and then I'm gonna turn around and book. Here it is. Sick graves, we made it. Woo. Well, I was gonna fly a drone here, but not with that. We're turning right around. Let's get the hell out of here. 
All right, I'm already dropping down off of this summit and I'm gonna get back into that saddle. And from there, I think I'm gonna just try and contour around and save on uh, having to do any significant climbing. Ooh, I do not like that this is exposed. I'm going down by the edge. The trees. Yeah. Definitely want to get down off this mountain. I'm a little frustrated at myself because I should have started this hike about an hour earlier, but you know, I was kind of moseying around this morning and taking my time with breakfast and slept in a little bit. So it's my own damn fault if I get wet. All right, still on the descent. It rained pretty good. I got some pretty scary lightning, but there's a little break right now in the rain and I am just getting around this one last contour and the bike is just right over there. But you can see all the little like hail uh, and snow that fell. That's all snowballs and hail balls. You can see it's white and I was looking over at the big peaks and they're covered in snow as well. So crazy, snow in August, gotta love it. All right, let's finish this last bit out. <laughs> and hopefully the road isn't too washed out. All right, well, according to the map, we have 754 feet to the bike and it definitely snowed over here. So I think I just have to go around this uh, little ridge here. And if everything is correct, we should essentially walk right into the bike or be very close to it, at least within eye shot of it. If I were a Honda Trail 125, where would I be? Not seeing it. Oh, I see it. There she is. Right where we left her. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like a winter wonderland. It's crazy. Oh man, my helm is probably soaked. Yep, she got wet. All right, let's pack up and boogie on out of here. All right, back on the bike and uh, I'm just soaking wet and I'm just going to try and get back to someplace warm uh, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Oof, almost didn't get up that. I just want to get down off this damn mountain because I don't think the rain is done. And there was some definite lightning uh, strikes that were very close to me. Uh, that was, it was not, uh, not very pleasant. So... Oh, I remember this. Yeah, the tree blocking the road. So, I remember this being a little bit steep to come up, but it seems like it's all right. Oh, almost skidded out right there. Oh, yeah, it's super loose down in here. It looks like there was a little bit of mud flow right through there. With, of course, with the rain, all of this is just uh, super loose. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get up all this. Whoa, that was some definite recent debris flow right there. Yeah, I might not be able to get through this. Oh, good God, I'm gonna take it wide. I don't remember what I did here. I must have gone through the woods over here because, yeah, that's a mess. I'm really bummed I didn't get a chance to like fly the drone up at the top. But uh, <laughs> I had no time to spare up there. I literally tagged the summit and ran. So didn't really get to enjoy it all that much up on sick graves. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, well, we've made it through that road. We're not in the clear. We still have got to get down 76 here. 
I think this road might be a little better. So there you have it. It was a rather interesting day. Uh, started off beautiful and sunny. I had a lot of fun on the Trail 125, making my way up some of those crazy back roads to where I parked it. Uh, and then I had fun climbing those uh, pretty steep hillsides. Uh, some of those things were ridiculous gradients and just sloppy and messy and tree covered and loose soil. It was just, it was kind of cruddy. It was a total Barkley climb. I did get up to Summit 9004 and then worked my way over to Sick Graves and I hit all the peaks. I will show my track here so you guys can see. Uh, but then as you saw, I hit some interesting weather as I was just cresting the final uh, summit up to Sick Graves. And on my descent, uh, there were lightning strikes that were visible and audible at essentially the same time. So that tells you that they were right on top of me. I was getting pelted with pea-sized hail and snow. So it was not pleasant. I was getting soaked. My raincoat wasn't working. Uh, I was like shivering. Not uh, not particularly well thought out there. <laughs> so I did make my way down back to the bike uh, and it finally eased up a little bit right as I was getting close to the bike. But then the road all the way down to the pavement was essentially just like a loose soup of mud and debris and it was just nasty. So I am very fortunate that I managed to get out okay without any major incidents. Um, the bike is just a mess right now. The trail is covered in mud. So anyway, made it home safe and sound, uh, and I'm just glad that I was able to get that adventure done and experience Sit Graves in all of its magnificent glory. Uh, and maybe next time I'll try and do it not during monsoon season. So thanks so much, guys. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you in the next video.